welcome to Kentucky Brew Reviews. I'm Special K, and this is Beer and Booze Hunting. Um, in this video, we're going to be in Washington, D.C., and Arlington, Virginia. Now, Arlington, Virginia is about five minutes from Washington, D.C., so they're very, very close. Um, in this particular video, there's going to be three locations we're going to be showing, and that's only because uh, the locations we're checking out are pretty small. It is a large city, so the, the locations are pretty small. Um, the beginning of there shows a flight. This is actually my first flight ever. Um, and then we actually took the Metro ever, which was also a new experience for me. Um, so the first store I'm going to show you, uh, it's actually called the Brew Shop. And we'll get there in a minute. Uh, it was an interesting store, very small. Um, they actually sell homebrew equipment like and hops, um, and they also sell beer, um, mostly craft stuff. They didn't really sell anything domestic. Um, and there's your sign right there. Um, here's the intro to the store. Oh, they so sold wine too, but I didn't show too much of the wine. Here's some of the hops they have, which I thought was interesting about the hops was they actually um, weigh their hops and sell them from these buckets. Most of the hops I've seen are like pre pre-packaged like in vacuum sealed bags. So I guess that was cool. And there's their scales right there for weighing the hops. Um, now here's some of their wine. They got their cold ready to go wine, some hops and yeast and whatnot right there. And here's some of their uh, local six packs of pints and stuff. Uh, I don't know much about any of these breweries. Again, this is my first time in DC. Um, a few of these aren't local. I see some Anderson Valley stuff. I know that's not local. There's some left hand milks out down there. Um, some Boulevard, Boulevard Brewing, Bells, Dragon's Milk. There's a beat up there, Sweet Baby Jesus. Um, their prices were a little high in this store, so their six packs were kind of high. Um, their singles were really, really high, um, but at the time, I didn't think there was much else as far as beer in this area to find anything. There was like a, a Target and a Safeway. Neither one of those stores sold singles. Because I flew um, to Washington, I had very limited space on my uh, bag, so I could only bring back a very few beers, so I was trying to get singles. So I can maximize the amount of beer I can bring back. There's so so many cool beers here that I wanted to grab and I just couldn't. Also, if I were to buy a six pack of every beer that I wanted, uh, we would not be doing a show anymore because that would be uh, crazy expensive. Some of these six packs were upwards of twenty twenty five dollars. Um, I think the average price from what I was seeing was around thirteen uh, thirteen fifteen bucks. But like I said, they do did go pretty high. Um, and again. They had a, uh, this is more of their homebrew section right here. Um, now, here are their singles. So, each single was individually priced. They didn't do a deal like a lot of stores do where if you buy like 12 or 6, they give you like a 10% discount like Total Wine and Liquor Barn do. Um, they had a lot of Oktoberfests, a few pumpkin beers here. Um, but they didn't have a lot of stuff that I was interested in from the uh, previous beer fridge. They just, they just weren't out. Um, I did ask uh, if they would break up a six pack and you know maybe give me a single and they said they would do it on some of them but a lot of them they, they couldn't do um so like on the seasonal stuff they said they would do anything like uh they would break up any of the uh, pumpkin beers or um like Oktoberfest. so um i was able to get a few pumpkin beers that i wouldn't be able to get in uh kentucky that way but anyway pretty good selection i think i ended up walking away with eight or nine beers uh from this store and i actually uh i actually showed them on a mini live stream and I'll put the link in the description down below. Um, this next part here, they, ha they had some gluten-free beer and some uh, vodka sodas, a few snacks here and there, but I was pretty interested in this mead right here. I didn't pick it up. Again, I was limited on space, but I wish I would have. It looked like a pretty interesting mead. It was 10 bucks for that bottle. It looks like maybe it's like a 16 or 18 ounce bottle. I wasn't entirely sure. Um, the only domestic thing they really had uh, that I saw at the store um, was they had some white claws at the store, um, and that was and I guess you could call high noon sun sips sort of uh, domestic or uh, you know big king daddy breweries, but um, that little cardboard box there was some Firestone. I actually got to pick one of those up. Um, these are the like bombers and stuff in this section. Um, those Topo Chico, which I wish I would have got, but I didn't. They didn't have a single available of that. They also had this section right here, which is some of their seasonal stuff. Uh, a lot of pumpkin beers, a lot of Oktoberfests. Um, I wanted that one. I wasn't able to get a hold of that one. 
Um, there's some Saranac pumpkin ale is another one I was interested in getting, even though I'm not a big pumpkin beer guy. This is one I really wanted to try. Dogfish head salt, a mighty. That one's okay. So this what I thought was pretty cool. Say they uh, made their own six packs of like various Oktoberfest, so you could try them. Um, and they were those like um, six packs range from like six to uh, or ten to fourteen dollars. They also had a growler section too. So now we are in a ABC store in Arlington, Virginia. This is right next door to the bottle shop. ABC stores is where alcohol is sold uh, in Virginia. Wine and beer is sold in grocery stores and beer stores. And then their alcohol, uh, you know, vodka, all that stuff, are sold in uh, stores like this, an ABC store. Now, they're state-ran, meaning all the prices are same, the same no matter where you go in, in the state, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, judging by the prices of the store, uh, I thought they were a little high compared to what I'm used to. Um, two to three dollars more than what I see in Kentucky. Um, also, it was kind of there were a lot of uh, empty spaces, as you can see from here. There's a lot of empty gaps, uh, and they didn't have a particularly huge selection. But again, um, all their stuff's regulated, so there's only so much they can get uh, per store. So um, they had some stuff unique to the store, like that mixer right there, uh, unique to sorry to the state. Um, I'm not used to seeing like Ciroc and Patron and stuff like that sitting out on the shelf uh, in, in Kentucky. Most of the time those are locked up or there's just a cardboard picture because they constantly get stolen. Um, so I haven't seen anything particularly interesting so far uh, until now. I uh, haven't seen this one before. Um, the soju right here. So I went ahead and picked up. It's apple flavored. Um, I've seen soju before, but I haven't seen a flavored one. So for five seventy nine, I figured I'd pick it up, and it's a small bottle, which is what I needed for travel. Um, you know, like I said, weight was an issue because of my plane uh, ride back. Um, again, De Serono, a little high on the price there. Godiva chocolate liqueur. We haven't reviewed it on the show. It's all right. Uh, the Buffalo Trace, uh, but bourbon cream. Um, that's pretty normal prices. There was, uh, like I said, a few things unique to the. To this area, but like it wasn't anything special. I've never seen this Bacardi Tropical right here. Um, I thought about picking it up, but I, it didn't seem seem worth it. And there's that rum down there. They have a lot of low end stuff um, that I haven't seen, like this Mr. Boston rum. Mr. Boston is a, is a Kentucky brand, but I've never seen uh, white rum like that before. Some Bacardi. Um, so when I was doing this video, um, I actually slowed down the footage a little bit for you guys because I was getting followed around and stared at hardcore in this store. I had two of the people um, working there. They were just following me the entire time and watching me. So I actually had to pretend uh, that I was talking to somebody on, uh, like on FaceTime. So I popped one of my earbuds in and I pretended that I was talking to one of my buddies so they didn't think I was crazy. But it still didn't deter them from following me around the entire time. There's some uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label. I'm surprised they just leave a $229 bottle of scotch just sitting out on a shelf for anybody to uh, anybody to just pick up. Uh, I feel like that would be pretty easily or pretty regularly stolen. A um, lot of Johnny. Um, some Green Label, the Cannons. I've never seen Singleton before. That was the first time I've seen that one. Um... Some of this other stuff I haven't seen before. Um, so you'll pass by it right here in a second. Um, you're going to see a $2,000 bottle of Macallan. So a $2,500 bottle of Macallan just sitting out on the shelf. There's no way um, in Kentucky I'd ever see a $2,500 bottle of Macallan for anybody just to pick up and walk away with. There's some screwball. Uh, it seems to be everywhere. I don't think I've seen the uh, 1.75s before, so that was... I guess a new thing. The bourbon selection was pretty weak. Um, you know, it's a bullet, some Jim Beam, and Jefferson's. It's a Four Roses small batch right there, which is pretty good. Price was way high on small batch, at least way more than what I'm used to paying. They're, I think they're asking for thirty-seven ninety-nine for that. I think I pay like twenty-seven dollars for that in Kentucky or something. Uh, some tin cup. Um, I did see this brown sugar bourbon right here. I almost picked it up. Um, but it, then I saw cinnamon flavors and caramel color added, and I decided to uh, 
pass pass on that one. There was it seemed to be like a tea whiskey next to it um, that I hadn't seen before. There's all the Jose again. This section was kind of bare. Tequila, they had what you'd expect for any basic store in tequila. You know, your 1800, your Jose, your Patron, your Don, um, Hornitos. Um, and there was a few that I didn't recognize, um, right below the Patron there. Um, some Cabo Wabo, Casadores. I think they had a few bottles of Mezcal, too, um, which was nice to see. You don't see Mezcal super often, but I think it's gaining popularity. Onto some of the cognac and brandy and stuff. Um, eh, I don't know too much about cognac and brandy. I'm not going to pretend I do. Uh, we don't do a ton on the show. Some Hennessy Black. I did pick this up, though. Ciroc uh, Brandy. I didn't know Ciroc made brandy, number one. I was like, and they had a pint bottle, which is the size I was looking for. So I picked that up. Um, I have zero expectations for that. Also, $17 for a bottle of brandy. That's actually solid, even if it's... You know, I'd expect something from Ciroc to be, you know, $30, $35, or maybe even 40 bucks. But that is a pint, so $17 for a pint, I guess, is a, a tad high. You can see the guy's shoes over there. He was watching me very closely. A lot of Tito's. Uh, Nikolai right here, very expensive. They had $7 for some Nikolai. Uh, I think the most I've seen in Kentucky is maybe 5 bucks, $5.99. Um, but apparently, you know, it's not as... They, as you'll see in a minute, they did have some lower end uh, vodka at the store um, that we don't typically get where I'm from. Um, some Platinum Seven. There's some weird chocolate. I've never heard of that brand. Three Sixty Chocolate Vodka. Those sound good. More Ciroc. Everybody loves Ciroc. Yay. Um, the prices seem to be pretty standard on the Ciroc wherever you go. Um, same about. Uh, they're about the same as they are in Kentucky. Um, there's some of the lower end vodka I was talking about. There's some absolute, um, and whatever that red uh, Bowman's, yeah, that was uh, looked questionable. Deep Eddies is always good if you're looking for a good flavored vodka. Svetka prices are a little high. I'm used to paying about twelve bucks for a bottle of Svetka. New Amsterdam flavors are normal. Um, some Smirnoff. Well, I thought that was a little high for twenty dollars for some smearing off. Um, here's some basil Haydens, some Michters. There's some uh, strand hands up there. I've never heard of that Widow Jane that was right next to it. I thought about getting it. Some Whistle Pig. Um, everybody loves Fireball. Everybody's got to have it. Some more fur roses down there. This next section is a Safeway grocery store. I wasn't familiar with Safeways. We don't have them where I'm from. But they did have a very good beer selection. Um, I was really disappointed. I checked a few gas stations and a few questionable places to try to find some 40s. Even I found a 7-Eleven, and nobody seemed to have 40s. Those were the only 40s or 32 ounces I was able to find in, um, when I was looking. Um, a lot of seltzers to be expected. Prices were a little bit better in here, but it is a grocery store, so it's... What you'd expect. A lot of stuff I haven't seen before as far as seltzers go. Um, some decent variety of packs of beers from, uh, looks like they're local. Um, whatever that Richmond, or whatever that was, Richmond Lager at the top there. Some Victory, Sour Monkey, Gold Monkey, Dogfish Head. Some Too Hearted right there. Some Cigar City Brewing. I know you guys have been asking for those. I wish I could have picked this up, Blue Moon Haze. Um, I just I couldn't fit a whole pack in my suitcase. And again, like I mentioned, they don't sell singles at the store. Um, so I'd have to have a, a whole six-pack, and this happened to be um, one of my last days here, so I wasn't going to be able to drink that in the time that I need it. Um, a lot of stone beers. Some Great Lake stuff. Some more domestic and imports. This is another one that I wish I could pick up. This is Guinness Salt and Lime up there. Uh, I'm still kicking myself for passing that one up. I just had a sheer curiosity. I don't even care if it's good. I just wanted to try it. So whenever Guinness branches off to something new, it's always always cool to try. So some 200L 12 packs. 
and they did carry some wine here, but that's that's about it for the Safeway. Um, so I'm going to show you guys some clips uh, and some pictures from my trip just because, you know, Lincoln Monument, stuff like that. Um, it was a really, really cool trip. I was really lucky to have the ability to go here and have the time. Uh, me and my wife had a great time. Again, we came here for a wedding, um, so I want to congratulate the lucky couple. I'm not going to say their names. Um, and hope they have a very happy and long marriage. Uh, here's some pictures from the Science Museum, uh, Natural History Museum. Here's a picture from my hotel room. Um, here's a picture from the venue um, we had the wedding at. And here is um, the uh, party, the after party, the recep uh, reception at the wedding. It was uh, a really, really fun time. But if you guys like to see anything else in the video, uh, make sure you leave a comment down below. I'm Special K. Thanks for watching.